That sucks, man. It's how do you do that? Like, how do you do when your ears pop? What do you do? Start swallowing a bunch of spit and just go. <gasps> really? Yeah. That's how you do it? I yeah. just kind of do the whole, like, like open my mouth and kind of yawn. It, yeah, I try to do that, too. Mm-hmm. I try to, like, hold in as much of a yawn as I can mm-hmm. and then let it go, like, like just let out a big old yawn so that way it just explodes my ears <laughs> oh, just explodes. if it ruptures whatever you know what it was for a good cause <laughs> i one time had my ear popped into the point where i thought i may have bumped like literally popped my eardrum <laughs> like, to the point i was like oh my god <laughs> you're recording aren't you yes oh my god <laughs> See, this is, and now this is we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> someone's gonna take the whole swallowing spit out of yeah. context. <laughs> I'm not gonna record that. Yeah. I'm not gonna like cut that out. It's gonna stay in there. <laughs> yeah. No, I started recording like a minute ago. So it was. <laughs> but someone could just easily edit out the whole like, <laughs> swallow my spit. Co-host from like, Keeping Up with the Nerds yeah. <laughs> says this publicly. <laughs> All right, Renee. Uh, I did the intro last time, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, you ready? Uh, let me see. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna. You know, <laughs> just, okay. let, let's pretend like this is just this a, is normal, a normal day. It's a normal day. A normal no day. interruptions. Yeah. All right. I think I I got this. All right. Here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hello, internet. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Nerds Variety Hour. Coming to you from one two nine two zero Philadelphia Street, Woody, California. Amy the Beauty. Win- no! no! I was gonna say Wimmers. <laughs> Wimmers. <laughs> Wimmers. Were st- we had two uh, in a row that were really, really no, well done. I was really hoping it wasn't gonna okay, be. Okay, <laughs> do this one. Give me more enthusiasm. Okay, got it, got I think it. you were thinking about it too much. Here I we was, go. On the I count was, of three, okay. Renee. Let's so- let's make this one solid. One, two, three. Hello, internet. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Nerds Variety Hour. Coming to you from one two nine two zero Philadelphia Street, Woody, California. Aiming to be Whittier's number one podcast of all things nerdy. I'm your host, Renee. And co host, Brian. And, and there we go. <laughs> there we, oh, there we go. Yeah. It, you know what? Sometimes I, I kind of been, when I've been editing these podcasts, I've noticed that when we have a more neutral tone of voice, we overthink yeah. our intros. And I think that's when our mind decides to just fumble words together because we're thinking ahead it. or yeah. thinking of the past or thinking of something else. And it just ends up happening. But you know what? We did it. That's fine. Perfect. We mm. move on. Let's start this episode. All right. Thank All right. you guys for listening again. You know, always a pleasure to come back every week when you guys could come and listen. This is issue five. Issue right? five. Issue five. Wow. That means that we've been doing this podcast for over a month now. A month and a week. A oh, month and man. Yeah, That's a month. Right. A month. And we've been coming out with every episode, every solid episode every week. So we haven't had a break yet. Nothing. Nothing, nothing so far. Knock nothing on wood so that that's how it stays. Yeah. Uh, this is what the day after 4th of July. Hope you guys had a good 4th of July. Yes. Very safe 4th of July. Renee, did I even mention the fact that we recorded last week's episode during your birthday and we just didn't say anything? <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I think it was that episode three or something. That was episode three or something. But it's fine. I'm I'm the type of person I don't like I said, like I messaged you, I don't make a big deal about my birthday. I know, but still we wished <laughs> Rebel happy birthday on that episode and it was your birthday we too. Love <laughs> we do, but like still, like happy late, late, nah. late birthday to you, Renee. <laughs> two issues later. Yeah, two issues later, I know. <laughs> Now, um, everyone said happy birthday on Facebook and Instagram, which is good. You know, it's maintain social Yeah, I had to message you after I figured it out all late. I'm like, what the hell is this? What? what? It was his birthday and I didn't say anything when we were face to face, man. Yeah. If you guys want to know what I did, I didn't really much do anything with everything that's going on. You know, uh, me and my girlfriend went to the mall really quick. Uh, we went to Brea Mall just to kind of see how it is because it is open now. And it wasn't too bad. You know, everyone had their masks on. But even though it was in Anaheim in uh, or it was uh, in Orange County. During that time, uh, masks were optional, so I did see a few people not wear masks. A couple people here and there. But at the same time, it wasn't too bad because everyone else knew, so I kept my mask on, and you know there was hand sanitizer. My sister, my my uh, my girlfriend always makes sure that you know we have we always sanitize our hands and stuff, and while we're touching everything. But uh, they had like they spread out all the tables too, so all yeah. the tables were like more than six feet apart, which was good. Before we uh, move on to the topic that yeah. we're supposed to discuss, it's kind of funny how I don't, I don't want to say it's kind of funny, but it's mm. it, it hit me today because uh, my girlfriend wasn't feeling so well, so we stopped by Starbucks to go get her something to drink, yeah. so that way you know some, it, she could get a little bit a mm. little bit awake, a little bit more, yeah. a little bit better. And um, 
it hit me how much our lives have changed due to this pandemic. Yeah. I don't think that it's gotten, I think it's gotten to the point where if you've kind of grown accustomed to it, you are just a little bit blind by what exactly has been going on. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember what last year before this whole pandemic hit, you had, you know, tables close together, indoor dining, people could just walk out normally and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's gotten to the point, And again, no complaints to this because this is very necessary for our own health. Yeah. But now you have, no tables, no dine in. Yeah. Uh, masks eat, are now, no, nothing. And masks are now a, a piece of clothing that you have to mm-hmm. wear. Yeah. To a point where it's become a norm to look at the style of mask that you have. And you I'm guilty of it. Like right no, now, I'm yeah. wearing a Looney Tunes one, you know? <laughs> no, it's funny. I go on now, what uh, my like t shirt websites that I go on and stuff, now they have an option of masks. Yeah. You can get whatever design you want, the same design, but in a, featured on a mask now yeah so that's how i know that that's how you know basically it's like we have adapted really into it now Mm -hmm. Um, especially here in uptown they are doing the whole you know cult closing off greenleaf Mm -hmm. so that people have the option to eat outside yeah and steps you know you can still come in get your food but you know there are tables out if you choose to eat outside which uh, again perfect i've lived in whittier my whole life Mm -hmm. um so it, if I mean, if you have not been paying attention to the podcast, mm-hmm. we record in Uptown Whittier, in, Uptown in one Whittier, of the comic yeah. book stores here. So if you're ever around town, come visit the comic book store. Mm-hmm. Say hi to us. Say hi to Susan. You know, just come and visit. It's a really great comic book store. Um, but the Uptown District, beautiful place. Oh, yeah. And for it to have, you know, outdoor dining and, you know, going out of its way to essentially mm-hmm. keep people safe by having outdoor dining. Yeah. It's great. It's a good thing to see. Especially around this time, because this time would be like car shows. There would be gatherings, uh-huh. little festivals it's that summer. they would have. Yeah. This would be the busiest time for the Uptown uh, Association that they would basically plan everything, let us know what's going on and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And with everything that's going on, obviously we can't, they can't do that now. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it hit me today how much everything has changed. No. Yeah. I think, Hopefully, you know, we go back to a norm. Yeah, I think so. People, when people say that, I go, I do see that. I do see us coming back to a normal lifestyle, Mm -hmm. but I do feel that masks and sanitizing yourself is going to be a hard habit to get rid of very quickly. Oh, uh, the mask portions of it are probably going to stay. The whole sanitation thing, honestly. It shocks me how many people I've seen think of this as a new concept. Mm-hmm. Like, excuse me, do you not use the restroom and not wash your hands afterwards? Yeah. And all of a sudden people are like, wait, I need to wash my hands? Well, no, duh. You always have to wash your hands. When yeah. You the like, do you want to yeah. shake people's hands mm-hmm. with your disgusting hand after, mm-hmm. you know, you did whatever you did in the restroom? Yeah. No, go clean yourself up. So let's call it a concept of sanitation. I, it's it's going to be long term. It's going to stay. I mm-hmm. hope that people are aware now. Yeah. You know, wash your hands and this and that. Mm-hmm. I think the mask thing, even after we hopefully find a vaccine or some mm-hmm. form of cure uh, for the pandemic, for the virus. Um, oh, I lost audio again. Oh, yeah. No, that just happened to me, too. Hold okay. On. Double check. Huh? Sorry, guys. We're having a little bit of I technical know, difficulties. Yeah. Press this button and then... Okay, and then it goes. Okay, so. we good? Yeah, we should be good. Okay. Okay, so hopefully... I mean, well, I, I might edit weird. it out. Yeah, it was weird. Sorry so about that. Sorry if about you that. hear any form of audio bugs, we apologize. This is... I don't know. I, don't, I gotta either go and try to clean out this... Freaking soundbar! <laughs> it's, it's getting old now. Two so, weeks ago yeah. was the whole audio bug with mm-hmm. the whole screeching. Hopefully this yeah. week, this week's episode isn't that. You know, we lose audio on either side of the ear. Yeah. We'll try to fix it. But mm-hmm. uh, just to kind of end this conversation yeah, uh, before on. we go yeah. on to the, the our main topic for this uh, for this issue, um, you know, I kind of have this feeling that there will be things that we take away from this and kind of keep it as a long term scenario. Sanitation and masks, I think, are something that are going to stay. But there's a lot of stuff that possibly won't ever come back to a norm. And I think that's just how if people necessarily look at, you know, our current living situations. I think yeah. that that's probably going to change massively. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's life. Things happen. You know, mm-hmm. I, we just have to grow accustomed to it. Um, but yeah, no complaints about the pandemic. We've been doing our jobs over here, staying, you know, away and making yeah. sure that we've been at home as much as we can instead of going out and doing our best to prevent the spread, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right, Renee, are we ready to go into the main issue? Yes. Okay. So last week we discussed, 
Um, we kind of hinted at the fact that we wanted to talk about cancel culture yeah. and pretty much how um, within the within like the the nerd and gaming community. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the topic that kind of brought our attention, or, or the, the 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 event that brought this to our attention, was Doctor Disrespect's uh, mysterious ban on Twitch with no explanation, mm-hmm. and the idea of why. You know, it might have happened. Uh, mm-hmm. There's been still rumors as of today on July 5th. Uh, we still don't know. And this has been almost over a week now at this point yeah. that he's been banned with no explanation. And everyone still is kind of confused as to what's mm-hmm. going on. Um, it's the main reason as to why we kind of hinted as the, for wanting to talk about this in this issue. Yeah. Uh, so it is going to be the main topic of this issue. If we have time later on, uh, depending on how far we go, yeah. we might talk about something else. But we want to kind of go into this and discuss it and give our own perspective. Um, before we move on with it, though, I want to stress that these are our opinions, and we're going to go into this topic as carefully as possible. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to you know, allude that we don't believe any of the allegations or anything that has been called out. Um, you know, because these are very sensitive topics and very serious issues that have been going on in the community. Mm -hmm. Um, We have to go with it in full respect until otherwise proven, you know, guilty or innocent or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to treat these things with respect until shown otherwise. Yeah. Um, It's very important. Um, But I also think it's very important to discuss it uh, just because this whole concept of uh, cancel culture does affect, you know, individuals that uh, consume the media that is being affected by this yeah and it does kind of change our aspects and our thoughts on you know uh writers or people or you know uh the media that we consume and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um so before we go into this and go full into discussing you know events that have been affected by cancel culture um i we want to start with uh what is cancel culture yes yes to fully define it uh i kind of looked into it uh, and I, I know it's quotes pulled off of Wikipedia, mm-hmm. um, but I, I feel like it kind of matches somewhat of a neutral definition as to yeah. what it is. Um, but according to the Wikipedia article, the act of canceling, also referred to as cancel culture, um, describes a form of boycott in which an individual, usually a celebrity who has shared a questionable or controversial opinion or has had behavior in their past that is perceived to be offensive, recorded on social media, is canceled. They are uh, ostracized and shunned by former friends, followers, and supporters alike, leading to declines in any career and fan base the individual may have at any given time. So this kind of is a neutral definition of to, as to what cancel culture yeah. is, you know, uh, and what it's been shown to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, more recently, it's been very apparent in a lot of different uh a lot of different groups. So many groups. It goes on to normal movie celebrities, but mostly also to like Twitch, but then Twitch players, but then also more commonly it happens onto YouTube uh, content creators and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, yeah, and then also you find out from you know writers, you know certain people in any sort of media's. It it's been happening more frequently now yeah um i I think it's important for us to not be blinded by what's happening in regards to that yeah you shouldn't ignore what's going on to the point where it's like you completely be like well i don't believe it you know it's like i don't care you know i don't care about that no you should know what's going on but again what you form on your own opinion about that is on you Yeah, yeah exactly um we talked about this i believe in issue one uh, when we were talking about how DC dropped out of Diamond Comics, yeah, the writer, right? Who, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. When the, the writer, I forgot the writer. He was supposed to write a um, a uh, three issue series about um, that's gonna be tying in with the Death Metal series that's recently coming out. Um, and recently, he had about maybe three or four allegations against him of uh, mis being very misappropriate to. Uh, his either staff or women in his um, career in his workspace and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So DC has decided to move forward without him and stuff. And now they're going to basically re redo his whole series into not only just, they're not going to do a three, a three part mini series. It's just going to be a one shot with a completely different writer and artist, which I feel sucks for the artists that put in time to do, Mm-hmm. you know the other series but you know what are you, you going to do they, you know they want to completely go a different route yeah to not have his name attached to anything yeah. so it's a little 
surprising because most of what's covered by people on social media are, you know, massive content creators Mm -hmm. or celebrities or people of, you know, uh, you know, big names essentially. And so when you mentioned it in issue one, it it shocked me a little bit. I'll be honest, because we're talking about a comic book writer, comic book writer. Yeah. Yeah, This isn't something that's massively covered by outlets. How did you even find out about it? I was actually going through like DC forums on Reddit and then just also like just in, uh, articles that day and then what happened that day was just uh, the article that was written was posted that day when we were going to record yeah see none of, no big outlet covered it no because it, it, it was, was only a, like one or two articles that was it there yeah. wasn't any because it's not a big he, he's not a very well-known person yeah. yeah so this whole idea of I, I, would it be really a cancel culture thing that one oh would that follow along yeah no, because uh, you know what it was more Probably. of the company's decision yeah. to do so and not people. Yeah. It's, it's, you know what? It wouldn't technically because, again, it didn't get a lot of uh, traction mm-hmm. and not a lot of people are talking about it and not fans or even people that heard about it, you know, are talking about it. Yeah. That's the thing. It's not like how basically, like James Charles, basically, how that was. Yeah. Yeah. It's just surprising because you think that, you know, our own little sphere of, you know, things that we like, mm-hmm. comic books, we don't see them as a popularized thing still. Yeah. You still have, you know, big nerds coming in reading their mm-hmm. paper issued mm-hmm. comic books, but you're not going to have like the nerds, quote unquote nerds that qualify or that call themselves nerds yeah. just because they play, you know, PlayStation 4 mm-hmm. or they watch the Avengers movie. Yeah. They're still not going into comic book stores and buying, you know, their issues and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's still like a small community sphere. Yeah. And you wouldn't think that something like this would essentially happen in That's sphere. another thing. Yeah. yeah. And it did. Yeah. And it did. Um, so, I mean, I guess it could kind of qualify as cancel culture ish, mm-hmm. but I, you say it isn't, I yeah, kind of say it isn't as well. Yeah. It's like I said, if, in the definition, it's has to be like, I think like a group of people or an entire fan base that have to basically cancel that person yeah. in general, which basically we haven't heard any sort of traction from it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're both outsiders. Would you say that we don't participate at all? No. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Completely. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, what do we personally define as cancel culture then? I personally, for me personally, it's like either the, for me in order to do that, I guess I would have to talk from experience that if allegations of a person or a, or a, place or even of a certain well-known person if the allegations end up being true and if they're just and if they're not hearsay i won't give my final decision on it Mm -hmm. but if they become true and there's evidence or if there is plausible reason why this person is either bad or toxic or doesn't really know what they're saying and Mm -hmm. stuff like that or just a plain idiot yeah yeah i will i will give my final analysis i'll be like okay i'm done with them then yeah that's 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 how i that's how that's how i feel and define it at least as cancel culture yes so what about people that jump into like the big mob mentality of cancel culture yeah that's where i get a little annoyed at but it seems like it seems like cancel culture it, today, at least in the past, what, two or three years now? Mm-hmm. Um, now that this basically we're getting the next generation of kids that basically didn't grow up how basically this is their introduction to either like YouTube or social media and yeah. stuff like that, that this is their way. And I think the this generation doesn't really grasp when it comes to either how serious an allegation can be mm-hmm. or how powerful it can be when you say stuff like that when you call someone either you know misogynistic or racist like it seems like you know they're just kind of saying it because Uh they've just been told they literally just got told what's going on and stuff like that and they are just immediately want to kind of just like jump on it yeah i think that's what how that's how it is right now at least gotcha so i define personally define cancel culture as like a mob mentality. Yeah. Um, I've all I for for a while now I've been seeing it be more of kind of um trying to find like a way that isn't deemed defensive. Yeah. Um it, it is a mob mentality where I feel you just kind of go about one it's not an unnecessarily an allegation, but I would it's say it's hard it's hard to kind of talk about when you 
don't want to put your own opinion in it, you know. Yeah. But it's I I think it, yeah. it's it's a mob mentality is, is what I see it. Basically, you know? it kind of is. And yeah. you know, we're not saying that like people right now are doing, you know, that's what we think right now, but sometimes that's what happens, you yeah. know. And looking at it on the outside, you know, I think we have to kind of give an example. That's the thing. I think. Yeah. So for what, what kind of example did you want to use right now, at least? for? So I'm trying at to least, think. Of, at least like recently that's happened. Well, we can talk about the whole doctor disrespect. Yeah. Well, because yeah, that one isn't necessarily cancel culture-y, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I think the best way to kind of go about this is because if we're trying to define our, per- if I'm trying to define the personal definition of what I think of cancel culture, mm-hmm. I'm going to easily say that it's a mob mentality. Okay. I think I figured out the wording for it. Okay. It's the mob mentality where this mob kind of dictates another person's decisions and mm-hmm. what they should believe in yeah. without you necessarily doing your Re- own form research, yeah. your yeah. own form of research. So when I think of, you know, things that we consume, like mm-hmm. for example, let, let's take into okay if you want an example we're going to go with the dc writer that you were talking okay, about what yeah, was yeah. his name uh oh, I have to, <laughs> you have to look it up but for example like him right yeah i i would have picked up that uh the death metal issues yeah because it's an important you know little mm-hmm. side piece of the batman you know storyline yeah so why not so if i go in and i buy the book not knowing about these allegations that were going mm-hmm. on and someone comes up and tells me no you should not be reading that book don't ever read it yeah well why because that guy did this mm-hmm. and therefore you can't read it no you shouldn't read it mm-hmm. and if you do then you're a pig yeah and that's kind of how i've been seeing cancel culture that's yeah where it doesn't allow you to understand mm-hmm. what's going on it's more of a mob telling you what you should believe in mm-hmm. without giving you the proper resources and if they do give you the resources it's resources to learn with spite and anger Mm -hmm. rather than being informative yeah because i think it is important for a lot of people to read into what's going on Mm -hmm. and make their own assumptions and if they make the incorrect ones because they've been proven to be you know guilty Mm -hmm. of whatever is going on then you should educate them and tell them you know that this is why it's important not to support these people Mm -hmm. and stuff like that that's kind of how i personally define yeah cancel culture that kind of kind of with the way you said it it's kind of like basically how like religion is when how some people try to push your their opinions that's what i'm trying to say is when people are very strong about their opinions Uh and they want to make sure that certain i'm not saying all people do this but i'm saying there are some people out there that that are very opinionated and they want you to know their opinions but the thing is there are also people that want to know that their opinion is the only right opinion it's the right one and therefore yeah and And it's his anger yeah It kind of reminds me of the first couple episodes of Altered Carbon. And I know this is completely probably a little bit. It it probably isn't a good example, but this is kind of how I relate it to. Go for it. Uh, In the first couple episodes of all. No, it's literally in the first episode of Altered Carbon when the main character basically walks out of their new shell or what is it called? The sleeves. Sleeves. Yeah. Yeah. When he walks out of the facility with his new sleeves Mm -hmm. and then there's a picture or a pan literally of uh, Catholics, I think they are. Mm hmm. And oh, it's, yeah, 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 the Catholic riots that are going out yeah, there, essentially yeah. saying that God is the only chosen one to mm-hmm. essentially deny or accept your death. Yeah. And, you know, immortality isn't true and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's kind of what I think about it. It's like they try to do everything in their power to show that you as a person are wrong for yeah. having a certain belief. Mm-hmm. But they don't allow you to be informed as to why yeah. it is. And they do talk about it in the show and kind of mention it here and there so slightly. You could you could reference that too. how cancel culture is when people try to because, OK. So, again, religion is another thing as well, too. And I'm not trying to compare the two, but I am saying that there are some similarities. Mm -hmm. When people push their religion on you, but they're so, so strong, so believe they're so in their minds that it is true what they're saying. But the thing is, is that there is no exact evidence Mm -hmm. of an afterlife. We don't know that. Yeah. And I'm I, I, I'm trying not to stir the pot here. <laughs> I'm just at some saying. Point, at I think some point. From, from the po- moment we started yeah. talking about this yeah. to now, we've already probably <laughs> stirred the pot somewhere. Yeah. But I am saying that when, when it comes to stuff like that, there yeah. is no definitive evidence. So they, But they still want you to believe in their beliefs. Mm-hmm. They still want you to believe in their opinion. Yes. And that's how council culture can be sometimes. Yes. Where some people come up to you, like you just said, an example of when you're reading the, that person's comic book that had the allegations against against him if that comic book still came out and someone came up to you they'd be like well you know you shouldn't do that why well because you know because he did of this. this he did this well, well can you show me how can you show me that he actually did it uh-huh no but he's had allegations against him okay but you 
you're not showing me that he actually is yeah, that type of person. Exactly. You know, so that's what, you know, how I perceive it as well, too. I got to have evidence. Mm-hmm. I got to have a definitive kind of like you got to have, you know, the real proof right then and there. Yeah. You know, to sh- to convince me to get me into your side. Yes. And I think that's what ev- anyone should do when they're trying to push their opinions or their own beliefs onto you. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's not fair. You shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't. That's almost kind of like you're just kind of like, you know, borderline brainwashing someone just because, you know, I'm this and I'm, I'm right. You know, you should follow me. Mm-hmm. You should. It's like <laughs> <laughs> now let's give them let, let's let's kind of take a look mm-hmm. at the positives and negatives of cancel culture, yeah. Okay. because right now we're kind of making it seem like they're all wrong no. for doing so no but, is there yeah. any positive aspects of having cancel culture around yeah i think because there are because if the person is the how that uh what people are saying or what you know what's been allegated against them or what's been basically brought into light uh-huh. and if it does turn out that is real then you know and he's their person this person is still getting support still making money still you know, without a care in the world is like, well, you know, you know, yeah, I got allegations or I had yeah. someone talk to bad about me. But guess what? You know, I'm still make, I'm still here. Yeah. You know, I'm still where I'm at, you know. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. I think it would be best to no longer support that person. Exactly. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know. It, so I, I 100% agree with you. Yeah. If the person has, you know, be it a person or be it a, mm-hmm. a piece of media, mm-hmm. for example. Right. Has any form of negative aspect to it yeah, an I, allegation a good, a good one would be danny masterson how he got actually he is convicted of uh, like three counts of rape actually can exactly. you tell me about this oh you didn't know that no i didn't know oh yeah uh, or danny, i might have but i might have danny masterson the guy that played hide on that 70 show that's right okay there yeah. yes so i needed the reference <laughs> of it. okay yeah, yeah hide from that 70 show is actually getting convicted because he is actually getting convicted of three counts of rape which were proven to be which true were proved, proven to be true and stuff uh-huh. you know, the women have came out they talked about it they have given their uh stories and stuff like that yeah and this was like when he was doing that semi show at the time. Yeah. So in those cases, cancel culture, you would say, are yeah. is beneficial. It's beneficial because you know that show. It just showed what of a you know what kind of person he is. Uh huh. That he he did it a while ago, and then he still became famous. Mm-hmm. He was on the ranch with uh, Ashton Kutcher on Netflix, you mm-hmm. know. And then when those allegations came out, they they fired him. him. Yeah. They booted him out. They booted him out. Now and Hollywood me, is now putting him on the blacklist. Now let me tell you this though. They managed to, I would say the cancel culture played a big role in, you know, bringing these allegations forward yeah. for that person. Mm-hmm. But would it be right for cancel culture to stay, take a step forward and say, okay, well, you know what? Because he was on the ranch, mm-hmm. we can no longer have people watching the ranch. Mm-hmm. Or because he was on that 70s show, mm-hmm. we should no longer enjoy that 70s show. That's, is that the right thing to do or do you think that that's where cancel culture takes it a bit too far i think that's where it's a little gray area honestly to tell you the truth because i still watch even though all these allegations came out for kevin spacey uh-huh. and stuff and they came out kind of you know they're very kind of you know there was evidence there's evidence yeah and you know and the when you hear that these allegations or there was something about the families involved and stuff and then now the families are quiet because you may now now you're thinking oh did kevin spacey pay them off now now he's in a different country now um but the thing is is that i still watch baby driver <laughs> you know he's oh, in that he wasn't baby driver yeah so i think you know <laughs> and yeah, he unfortunately was. he was in another favorite i'm 90s. actually really good on baby yeah, driver right so but the thing was is that um, I think that has to go along to the line of if you're going to support any new stuff now. Yes. Now that we know about it, I think I think that has to go with like, OK, if they put out anything new, like if Kevin Spacey came back and did House of Cards, another season <laughs> of House of Cards, do you really think everyone's going to watch the new no season? No one would of House probably of watch yeah. the show. Or if Danny Masterson came out in a new movie, yeah, would you really watch it? No. Yeah, because he's attached to it, yeah. and even Hollywood knows he's attached to it, so they can't they can't have him in it. If the listeners can see what I'm doing, I'm like really you're, spread out. You're really I'm just spread like out. Tense. And like, yeah, you're I'm like, tense. Your shoulders are up. <laughs> I'm, te- <laughs> I'm tense because uh, it's important to know that we're discussing this with an open mind and in a neutral stance as well. Yeah. We don't want to offend anyone. No. And I think that that's why I'm a little bit tense. Like it, it's important to talk about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. We've been in discussion about having this episode for quite mm-hmm. some time already. And I think it's very important to put it out there and talk about it because I think I think the way we're talking about it is pretty good. We're not yeah. we're not we're not saying that we're on a side or anything. Yeah, like that. well we're against it a hundred percent or for it a hundred percent. We're actually talking about how it is. Yeah. We're actually discussing how it is and I think that's what needs to be said is how it's being treated right now. Either people need to hear it or people need to understand what's going on and how it works and yeah. stuff like that. And how it could actually yeah. ruin lives as well, too. So I'm going to put my two cents in as to if it's beneficial to our society or if it's negative. Mm-hmm. I'll agree with you in this, in that it is beneficial to point out allegations that have been hidden by people mm-hmm. uh, and to bring them forth, no matter how long it is. Because yeah. when we think of stuff like rape or sexual assault or sexual violence, mm-hmm. things like that, no matter how long time passes, they are mistakes that live with you forever. Yeah. They are things that you should know. And, you know, if it's something as serious as rape, Mm -hmm. there should be consequences because it's not a good. Yeah. Yeah. That I have no tolerance for. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, Sexual harassment as well. You know, Mm -hmm. like I said in the last ones and the last issues before, I've had issues like that as Mm -hmm. well. And I've really never spoken about it, you mm-hmm. know, publicly. And I still choose not to mention names or anything like that because yeah, that's it's, your own. That's my own thing. I just yeah. don't feel comfortable doing so. Mm-hmm. Um, but those that do choose to speak out and say something about it, yeah. you know, those those people should, you know, be, you know. Yeah, they should. They should basically hear their basically um, get told of their crimes and stuff yeah like exactly because it's a good thing to call those people out it should not be out. a social norm mm-hmm. in our society in especially, no way or shape or form especially for victims of all that too please come forward with that you know you, you could take it could take as long as you need but know that if you come forward as soon as it happens you have a better chance of convicting the person or bringing justice to that person yes yes and now i'm going to discuss why i think that it does more bad than it does good yeah. though the, uh-huh. the concept of cancel yeah. culture so when we talk about danny or kevin spacey we did not know any of these allegations before they've done pieces of work yes. danny for example was in that 70s show like you said right yeah so is it wrong to essentially say well because he was on that 70s show we should no longer watch that show no because you have mila kunis you have yeah. ashton kutcher yeah I cannot, for the life of me, remember the actress that plays Donna or... Oh, that... Ooh. Lauren... Lauren... Oh, gosh. Okay, but you know yeah. what I mean. Or Red or um, Kitty. Like, the, yeah. those actors and actresses as well. They all put massive amount of work into the, what, 10 seasons or 8 seasons that That 70 Show was in? Yeah. Yeah, they put in massive work. They have. One person should not ruin the work and mm-hmm. history of those people. Mm-hmm. Didn't the actor that played Red pass away? No, he's still alive. He's it's still Kurtwood Smith. That's okay. his name. So someone, I feel like someone did. Maybe. Anyways, Maybe, besides the know. point, they did work in there and they put in their own characters. Like yeah. I'll tell you right now, Hyde was not my favorite character on that 70s no, show. No, actually Hyde was never a favorite character of mine. I've always <laughs> loved either Fez, Kelso, uh-huh. um, and Red. Red. Oh, Red. Red. <laughs> Red my w- personal hero. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know what's funny? When... You know, I grew up as a kid watching those movies, th- that show, right? Uh huh. And as a kid, I was like always on Eric's side when it comes to stuff. And now but you're then, like, but on then I'm grown up. I'm on like fucking <laughs> stupid Eric's an idiot, you know? Come on, <laughs> dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> The amount of times I've said dumbass as an adult, just because, and then I think about it, I'm like, I'm gonna grow up to be like Red, aren't it's, I? It's funny how basically, and also was another show to kind of spiral just a little bit. Another show of an of a TV dad was um, King of the Hill. Uh huh. Where King of the Hill, where I didn't like Hank. Oh, but then, <laughs> but then I got older and I'm watching the series again. I'm like, I feel your pain, man. I feel your damn pain. it, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> 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 I think one of my favorite episodes was when, uh, oh no, favorite parts when also when <laughs> Hank does so much to try to get Bobby to a normal kid and he just Bobby doesn't want to do it, um, is when Bobby gets a guitar uh-huh. and he's playing the guitar and he's like, what are you doing, Bobby? And he's all like, I put cheese in it. <laughs> I was like, 
I how, my how making a song about cheese. Your, <laughs> how long have you been practicing your um your uh, oh, imitations of these? Oh, ever since I was little. They are, they're pretty good. <laughs> they, Hank's like the whoa. Oh, oh. <laughs> that one was like really good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go, go. Oh my god. Going back. Smiled, to, yeah, yeah, that's spiraled out. So that's let's go smiled. back to the whole thing. Yeah. So I was saying that you know canceling shows yeah, so, or TV series so, from people yeah. that were in you know out that had these allegations, mm-hmm. it doesn't benefit anyone because yeah. now you're essentially bringing people that didn't were not anywhere near involved no. those allegations down with them mm-hmm. there's no reason i have not heard anything about canceling that 70 show no. thank god yeah because that show is fantastic yeah i have issues with it but i think that it's a really good show um baby driver is among one of my top three movies so i'll so what i like to do now is that i'll play on baby driver uh-huh just to kind of vibe it uh-huh. you know just like people will come and be like <laughs> <laughs> people will come in and be like oh you're playing baby driver and they're watching it and you see kevin spacey they go oh oh <laughs> <laughs> and they're like oh i forgot he was in this movie everyone did because he played a really good character and he did a really good <laughs> <laughs> he he did a good job he again, did a re- again those allegations came out after baby yes, driver so yeah. he did a really fantastic job in his role in baby driver yeah, and he's not a main character no he's not no so because of his allegations and what happened, yeah. there's no way in hell that I would support something that he came out with now. Yes. But in the stuff that he did before mm-hmm. with other actors yeah. and other directors, I'm not going to disregard them just no. because of his allegations yeah. and what he did. There's no reason to do so because yeah. now you're bringing other people down. Mm-hmm. You know, we can always watch a movie and say, well, this person, you know mm-hmm. that he was convicted of this. Yeah. And educate people on that. Mm-hmm. And even if they did a good job, like, I, I still think that he did a really great job yeah. in Baby Driver. I'm not going to say, like, yeah, he did a great job. If I see him ever again, mm-hmm. perfect. Let's go and put him in another movie. No, 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 no. I will mention another actor that is featured in well-known movies. Okay. Okay. The actor that w- that played the principal in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, he was also the no. dad in Beetlejuice. Oh no! Yeah, and he was also in Sleepy Hollow and stuff like that. But that actor in general is in jail, convicted of making and distributing child pornography. Oh boy! <laughs> so, and, and this yes. is this is why I kind of look at cancel culture mm-hmm. more on a negative aspect than like a positive one. It's because easy, yeah. it's very, very, very selective. Mm-hmm. Because we, you mentioned two things, mm-hmm. three. Three. Three actors. Three actors. That are well, that in, if you look back in like well movies and TV shows that are universally liked and watched over and over but again. But the mob doesn't mention them. No. And they go after the more modern things mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. In terms of, you know, participating in cancel culture, I would say that I kind of do somewhat mm-hmm. participate on a personal level. Not to a point where I'm going to tell someone that they are doing an irresponsible thing yeah. for doing this and watching this. Yeah. I would say that my more recent um, participation of it was with 13 Reasons Why. Okay. And the only reason why is because the thought of suicide and the dramatization of it really, really bothers me. Yeah. Um, I think if it's a minor detail in a movie or show, mm-hmm. it doesn't bother me as much as it being an overall arching concept and yeah yeah and my girlfriend Funny you mentioned 13 reasons why because i've actually watched that show and i'll tell you i'll tell you how i how so I, how i think about it but go ahead okay so my girlfriend watched the whole series okay i continuously told her that i would not be in the same room watching it mm-hmm. or try to pay attention to it because i was extremely bothered by it and I am guilty of trying to convince her to not watch it because she would ask why. Yeah, I'm a little. I'm a little. You're I will, trying to talk her out I, of I, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I will admit because if she does listen to this issue and mm-hmm. she says, "Well, are you trying to," I'm just gonna say, like, you know what? <laughs> yes, I will. I will admit okay. that I did try to convince her to not watch it. Yeah. But it was because I like I didn't. I just don't like and feel that it's necessary to talk about these issues and make it into a drama when it is an active issue in society that does need to be taken care of. Yes. We recently had a Twitch streamer. I think his name was Reckless or something like that. Yeah. I can't, yeah. Uh, I'll look in, I'll, I'll find it while you provide your, yeah. your next talking points, mm-hmm. but you know, he committed suicide because yes. of depression. Yes. And I take those things extremely serious because yeah. I have had moments in my life, mm-hmm. not suicidal thoughts, thankfully, but I have had depressing moments and mm-hmm. where, you know, 
people don't really listen or don't really pay attention to anything that goes on. Mm -hmm. And that's how it starts. You know, you have people with, you know, big, big issues. Robin Mm -hmm. Williams, for example, massive comedian, massive actor. No one in their minds thought that this guy had any swarm of depressing issues Mm -hmm. or, you know, issues that he kept in. What did he do? He committed suicide. And then all of a sudden he is now remembered as one of the greatest actors to ever come out. Mm -hmm. But why after his death? And so yeah. that's where 13 Reasons Why Oh, I why see what me. you mean. Okay. Yeah. And so I yeah. can't stand that concept. And so that's why I was so against 13 Reasons Why, yeah, okay. because this is an issue that has been ongoing. Mm-hmm. Why is it that after the first season, all of a sudden people started to care more? Yeah. And that's how it felt like. I don't think that oh, people started to care more. I think okay. that more people that I think that it was a an issue. It became a more apparent issue when it came out. That's what it seemed like yeah. in society. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I was against it. So that's my participation. That's your part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's my participation. Okay. Yeah. So for me, I've actually watched 13 Reasons Why. Um, I will admit that I do like the show uh-huh. in some ways. But um, as part, yeah, as when you were going on about how what it means to like dramatize it and stuff like that, I'm actually a person of, uh, in high school, I did have suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. At one time I did almost consider doing it. Mm-hmm. So when watching the show, I can kind of see... I can familiarize certain points that what the show is trying to do about, you know, a person that wants to commit suicide and stuff like that. Uh That's why it appealed to me. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's exactly how I kind of felt in high school and stuff like that. And what happened and stuff or uh, certain things that I was considering and stuff like that. But I never did it. Obviously Uh I came, I kind of came over that. I I, I realized that like, you know, it would like I came to the realization that I, it wasn't going to be fair to my family and stuff like that. I didn't want to do that to my family. I didn't want to do that to anyone that knew me and stuff like that. And I was like, no, that's not. It's not the direction you, I should go. And um, well, upon watching the show, I do I do see what you mean. And uh, it was getting a lot of traction when the show was coming out, and I think that's what basically what brought in its fan base and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that it was you know, it became like a the negative a, a, brought brought in more more people to watch it yeah stuff, because they're curious so were you like ever that. affected by people trying to cancel the show for that reason no that, no, no never no, buy I, it i never i never got it I, I i was i see what they mean yeah i do yeah and the way they did about it and i know that some people were like you know they were i think the one main thing that i kind of got a little annoyed was that they said uh the one thing they said is like that you should never have shown it the way that they shown it uh the, the character committing suicide yeah and i go you know what i kind of disagree i feel like that scene when she when she does kill herself you know the way they showed it was necessary because like you know i think that you know the way other shows or movies that do it they do it to like it's more like an elegant kind of thing and stuff like that and that was more of that was that felt yeah i've never seen it i've never seen it it's very very intense it's an intense scene so like you're even talking about it yeah and i'm like like, Whew, yeah, yeah it's like you know whenever that scene comes on and i do watch sometimes rewatch it just to kind of like because i sometimes forget what happens and stuff and i watch it again and i'm just like yeah ooh, it's it's still an intense scene but it needs to be because it's a serious thing yeah yeah you know? so in those terms i think it's important to have you know certain stuff like that to remind to even kind of educate people of yeah how things are essentially even yeah, if it that's is like how a i took that's how i took it yeah. when watching upon it it needs to people need to be talk about it because if you just never talk about it and be beat around the bush you're never going to help that person that yeah needs. and that's where cancel culture kind of has its negative aspects to it that if we kind of just disassociate ourselves with everything yeah if, like if, if cancel culture would have came in and basically said you know what let's go ahead and cancel 13 reasons why because this depiction of suicide is way too mid it's way too much it's way at, too big at that point you're just doing it because you're uncomfortable exactly with the topic but if people want to learn hear about it yeah. exactly if people want to learn and it educates them in a positive way then th- there's no benefit to it tv and movies are the best way to form uh, to show people the realism or certain topics that you want to talk about. Yeah. And I've, that's happened to me, you know, like I've learned most of my, um, you know, not to be, you know, treat people differently through movies and TV shows. Whenever sitcoms talk about racism or they talk about, you know, um, how to treat people differently or you shouldn't treat people differently. I've learned all that through TV and movies. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my family, my dad and my mom did, 
you know, tell me that. But the thing is, is that it's your parents telling you that. So you're kind of like, you're not taking it too seriously. Yeah. But if you're following from a movie or a TV show that you love and they talk about that topic and you're like, whoa, oh, Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Now I know. And now you're educated because of it. Um, Before we go on to the next talking points, uh, Byron Bernstein, uh, he went by Wreckful on Twitch. Just to be respectful. Yes. Uh, He was the one that committed suicide and died at the age of 31 a couple days after recording or before recording this episode. (laughs) That's terrible. Uh, Yeah. If you Google his name, there are a bunch Mm -hmm. of articles uh, that better explain what happened to him. I don't want to speak on on his behalf and his actions and what's going on. So just Google his name and you can kind of read the story of how he basically went about his decision and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, um, just thoughts to, you know, the people affected by it and yeah. hopefully everything goes well. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to the concept of, uh, cancel culture, um, you know, before we start mentioning other examples that we've seen, cause I think we're at our 40 minute mark at this point, right? Yeah, 40, 45. So, um, you know, I, it's also an important thing cause cancel culture, I, I think cancel culture has existed, you know, it's been around for a really, really long time. Yes. It's existed. It's I would say before. New, it's no. not really a new thing. It's just with, it's become a more, a more common thing now because of the internet now bingo yes there it is <laughs> that, that thanks for the transition <laughs> um you know the internet has grown to be the record keeping place of everything and i think that a lot of people kind of have started to say that it shouldn't be looked as a bad thing mm-hmm. but if we look back I, what i'm 26 you are i am 28 28 i'll be 27 this year yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're about a year apart. Yeah. Uh, so I would say that maybe a decade ago, while we were still in high school, the internet wasn't a big, big, big place. Oh no. Yeah. Ten yeah. years ago, I think YouTube or ten or maybe a little bit more, YouTube was barely becoming a thing. Uh-huh. The only social media platforms that we had were like MySpace and yeah. Facebook was barely taken yeah. off, and it wasn't like a place where people can publicly post you yeah. know their things. And I think that those entry places where people could post whatever they want, yeah. you know, barely started popping up. So. so the concept yeah. of cancel culture existed, but it was on other media sources. Yeah. But now with the internet being more apparent and more available to everyone else, yeah. anything that you say and do can be taken mm-hmm. and, you know, be used against you in the future. I think a good example would to mention that is uh, Shane Dawson oh, right yes. now. So, so if you guys don't know Shane Dawson, Shane Dawson right now is a big YouTube content creator. And, he, but the thing is, is that he, 10 years ago the videos that he would do mm-hmm. were a little bit edgy they were they were very um they are not appropriate for the time they weren't appropriate at the time but the thing is is that at the time 10 years mm-hmm. ago the internet never really had a filter or not no. really you know you would put out edgy stuff i think i i remember 10 or 15 years ago uh there was a website i think it's still around but it's called e-bombs world where oh my god yep <laughs> basically yep. remember the um the mentally handicapped yes. um, burger king song yep yeah you know do you want some apple fries with or you know yeah. like yeah oh ding my fries god are done, ding fries okay when that came out I remember every kid in school was laughing their ass off. And now if you try the, to do anything like that, you can't, that, do, you that can't do that. You yeah. can't do that now. Yeah. Um, also, um, the, 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 the Smurf song, Papa Smurf. Uh-huh. Remember that song? Yep. Uh, I don't want to repeat it. But no, it's like, don't. <laughs> don't. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> no. But if you guys, you know, if you listeners that are our age know about that, obviously you can't put out that song yeah. now. Um, I will admit that I've been a fan of Shane's since the early ages of YouTube. Yeah, I, of his like yeah. Shanene. Yep, and I stuff. watched him with Shanene, and yeah. I remember laughing my ass off I with was, her. And because at the time we were teenagers, and he was a young adult, yes. he was barely he was eighteen, you know. And then you know, I think eighteen being like twenty, almost twenty years old around that time of his era. That was like between the age of eighteen and twenty something, or maybe twenty one, where he was putting out those videos. Yes. And we found it all hilarious yes. because it was at the time, you know, we were immature. We were all immature. Yes. And Shane was immature because he was a comedian at the time. Before we go on, yeah, go we're on. talking about his past, not his, his past. present this cancellation. Is not, again, this Be- is not yes. him now. Yes. And the only reason I don't want to talk about his present cancellation yeah. is because there are allegations against him that have not proven to be true or false yeah, yet. It's all hearsay. It's right all now. hearsay. So I don't want to put my two cents on that no, one yet. Yeah. But I will put my two cents on his previous stuff before. Mm-hmm. Like you said, we all laughed at his stuff with yeah. the whole blackface and like, mm-hmm. you know, his, you know, really insensitive jokes and stuff yeah. like that, that we 
y'all used to laugh at back then, he right? Was, so the thing is, is that so I like to say that back then Shane was considering himself a comedian that uh-huh. puts out YouTube videos, which is fine because what does a comedian do? Comedian talks about risky stuff, talks about edgy jokes and stuff like that. Because if you talk about stuff like that, it is going to get traction. But also, it is kind of funny at some point because yeah. it's that person taking that risk, taking that risk to tell you that joke. And you're kind of like, oh, wow, okay. Yes, you know? exactly. So, but now if we fast forward to now. And those things have to those, be Yeah, those gone. things happened. He changed. He went through a phase, actually, of there was a transition of Shane Dawson where he was he knew – when he was, I think it was like maybe 2010 or 2011, he knew, at, you know, getting there, he was like, okay, I got to stop doing jokes. Mm, and like he that. didn't do it and he did food. He, never, he food did food blogs. videos. Yeah. For yeah. the like next three or two years, he did food videos, which was weird, you know, because, you know, watching those, I still try to follow him, uh-huh. but you knew that he was in a rut and he was in a creative rut where he didn't know what he wanted to do. Cause he, he kept talking to... about wanting to be a, be a producer yeah. or a director and make yeah. his own movies. And then he went into conspiracies for a bit. Yeah. And during, yeah. And during the time, this is personal time as well. He broke up with his girlfriend. He came out as bisexual as well too, which was a big, big thing for him because he finally can express his true self. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he was dating and then also dating. Uh, he now he, he was dating his Fiance now is Ryland uh-huh. and um, basically still in that rut, but still kind of like, OK, I think I know where to go. And this was two weeks prior mm-hmm. to now where he's being convicted. Yeah. And, you know, being looked into for which he was like, actually, some other stuff. Yeah, on yeah. Y- if you look back a year ago, he put out the biggest series on YouTube was the Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star mm-hmm. thing. And everyone was loving it. Everyone was like uh, so happy for Shane that he was becoming so much bigger and he was, you know, doing everything right, creating a, you know, merch store and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, now. Now it's just a completely different Now it's story. completely different because apparently now people, it started with Jenna Marbles being like, I'm apologizing for anything that she's done in her past. Mm-hmm. Anything that she, uh, has anyone that felt that she has offended or felt like, you know, it wasn't right because of her old videos or anything that she did. So it inspired Shane Dawson to do the same thing where he felt like he wanted to apologize for any sort of stuff that's happened in his past for his content and stuff like that. And then boom, apparently the apology didn't matter to most people Mm -hmm. because they were like, Oh, what, well, what did he put out looking on the internet, looking at Shanae and Shanae and friends and stuff. And they're like, Oh, he He's a this. terrible person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think cancel culture in that matter is like almost at, in that definition. It seemed like it was like a witch hunt. Yes. Where it was like, oh, well, you wait, you said you put out bad stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look up what you put up. And then but then I'm thinking about it. I'm like, but he already apologized for all that. He already con- tried to f- like f- put that stuff behind yeah, him to move on to yeah, as a better person. And you could tell he did because, you know, and that happened with me, too, where it's like, you know, I was a young kid following Shane Dawson and then I'm getting mature. He was getting mature too. Mm-hmm. And now I like his content now because mm-hmm. he's matured as a person. I know that this is kind of like a self blow, but PewDiePie recently, I don't know, out of all people, PewDiePie. Was it PewDiePie part of cancel culture? PewDiePie was a part of cancel culture for yeah. saying the N word yes. on a stream. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they now he's made it into a joke. I think that he, like last year, he was just joking about it to a point that it was just like he was exhausted by it. Yeah. He's like, if you're going to keep bringing it up, I'm just going to make jokes out of it. Now he doesn't, he'll still make his like obvious little jokes like, mm-hmm. ah, a bridge. And like, you know, make fun of it for that reason. <laughs> um, but he had recently a video uh, where he talked about, you know, cancel culture because he watched a Jubilee video that came out in May yeah. of last year. Mm-hmm. And it was like pro cancel culture people and anti cancel culture people. Mm-hmm. And it was really funny. No, no, I, no really like informative. Jubilee is actually a really good channel for people that are always curious about what people think and how yeah. people react. He's been making a lot of videos with Jubilee. Jubilee is actually yeah. really good. I like I like going to Jubilee sometimes. I used to be subscribed, but then I noticed that they were constantly putting out stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break from Jubilee. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. But I think Jubilee is what, uh, it feels like Jubilee is basically what BuzzFeed needs to be. Yeah. 
because BuzzFeed, you could tell they're very one-sided. Yes, they are yeah. very one-sided. So yeah. Jubilee, so that's what they did last yeah. year. And PewDiePie did a review on it. Yeah. And he mentioned something that was just kind of like, yes. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you mentioned it opens up the doors for people to come back and accuse you of things that you've done before. Yeah, but he doesn't that, so, so thinking about that, I'm sorry, but the thing is, is that if you apologize for that and own up to that and basically real, you know, do bring it into light. And then when people say, oh, you were a racist because you did this, doesn't that kind of make it derivative of what you're trying to do because this person already apologized for that? So an apology doesn't mean anything. Apparently. I've always grown up to believe that apologies don't mean anything if oh, okay. an action isn't behind it. Okay. So I think that if you've done wrong, you yeah. know, and it's not a serious allegation, it yeah. was something that you did wrong, mm -hmm. you know, Shane Dawson with blackface mm -hmm. or PewDiePie saying the N word mm -hmm. on, you know, while playing uh, PUBG. Yeah. If you grow up and start doing better work, it doesn't erase the actions that you've done before. Okay. But it basically improves you as a character, as a yeah. human being. Because from, let's say PewDiePie, right? Because yeah. I'm not going to, we're, we're talking, yeah, we're, we're nerd talking. We're yeah, nerd talking. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to talk about PewDiePie, yeah. former Let's Player. Mm -hmm. now just the content creator on youtube he did he, he he's had his growths mm -hmm. he went from just playing video games to making really radical videos and yeah. really extreme videos that were just kind of like meme internet yeah PewDiePie. and then he said the n-word over the bridge yeah. and then apologized for it and then from that point on he's done donation videos donation streams yeah he's you know been a very positive voice for youtube he's and still, he's, he's still a big he influencer. is the biggest he's one of the biggest influencers on yeah. the platform mm -hmm. And he's talked about it. And what he said was, to him, it's funny to see how last year everyone was so against James Charles mm -hmm. for the accusations that Tati or whatever her name is yeah, Tati, yeah. basically had against them for, mm -hmm. you know, betraying her, whatever. It's some stupid beauty thing, which mm -hmm. is what's going to get me canceled now because I said that. <laughs> um, but don't then worry, I don't think they reached to I us. <laughs> they it's will. a different community. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, you know, then all of a sudden these allegations started to come out against Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. And yeah. now all of a sudden they're protecting James. So mm -hmm. it's like you flip back and forth and yeah. this kind of cancel culture mentality isn't consistent. And that's what he has an issue with because yeah. cancel culture for him is a culture that doesn't grow and doesn't mm -hmm. allow you to progress or yeah. even go into any form of accusation yeah. without evidence. And that's what he has an issue with. And I 100 percent agree with him in that yeah. sense in that. You know, the mom mentality of cancel culture usually just points fingers, mm -hmm. you know, the loud voices. I'm not going to say every aspect, yeah. every aspect of cancel culture isn't like that. But there is a loud voice out there yeah. that says there's an accusation here. Let's take them down. Let's take her down. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter until they're proven wrong. And mm -hmm. if they are, I'm still going to call them out and I'm still going to do this. Mm -hmm. That does no benefit for anyone because it basically leads to just a snowball effect where it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on mm -hmm. with no repercussions because now all of a sudden they're going to point fingers at you and say, well, this is what you said. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the whole point where we said that the internet is a record book. Mm -hmm. What we're saying now stays on the internet. Yes. Maybe not forever, but if someone in the future mm -hmm. decides to just say, you know what, we're going to look at Renee and we're going to look at Brian's history and mm -hmm. see what they've said. They can take snippets out of this podcast episode yeah. and essentially just use it against us. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that we're running out of time, so if you don't mind, we're going to jump straight into examples of pretty much what's been going on. Mm -hmm. um, so in my opinion, and I know that we do have to talk about Doc. Yeah. Um, in, in my, this episode might be a little bit longer. That's fine. It's fine. I, it, you know, Sometimes if you're we here. need to carry on. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit longer. But examples besides the whole Doc incident. Mm -hmm. Um, is, you know, recently Assassin's Creed Valhalla was announced in May with the whole Xbox yeah. um, presentation that was going on. And the director who also did Assassin's Creed Origins, um, he stepped down for having allegations of being unfaithful to his wife mm -hmm. uh, regarding the whole Me Too movement. Yeah. I, I am not, I'm, I, I swear to you, Renee, mm -hmm. I tried looking for these accusations online. Mm -hmm. All the articles just basically said he stepped down and really? had his Twitter post. There's no evidence yeah. at all. Um, and that's where I felt like cancel culture came into effect and basically just said, well, you did this. They called him out on it. Yeah. And he even tweeted it and said that his family was affected by it. So he felt that it was necessary to step down from the project. See, I think so then when it comes to stuff like that, uh -huh. when it comes to stuff like I feel like that was more of like a personal thing that he kind of dealt with and didn't really need to bring into light. 
because it's, that's the thing said, is that we don't know yeah we well, don't know how far these allegations went because apparently it went with the me too movement mm -hmm. so if there was any form of sexual harassment in the unfaithfulness yeah then it's a bigger issue and we can't defend them that's the thing and but so, but he said it was hard on his family right yeah so i'm assuming that they probably went after his family uh -huh. or they revealed the information to his family mm -hmm. which led to the unbalance and him having to step down and that's where cancel culture gets a little bit rocky for me yeah in the sense that it's like you essentially just not just ruined his life, but his family's life. That's, yeah, that's why I find uh, I get a little kind of mm, little. Yeah. If yeah. it's cheating allegations, that's still wrong. But, you know, that if needs it, to be dealt with personally with him, with him and his wife yes and not something along but if it was like sexual harassment sexual violence yeah, rape if, stuff like that yeah. that's something that's far worse yeah and that's where i feel like cancel culture could have a benefit in calling him out on mm -hmm. it but i didn't see anything regarding that it mm -hmm. just says that there was just some form of me too allegations that went with it yeah. and he had to step down from it mm -hmm. and affected his family so in that sense it's kind of like okay well what benefits do you do there if mm -hmm. you're really messing with that and mm -hmm. the thing that really kind of confused me was in his tweet he basically said, please continue to support Assassin's Creed Valhalla because mm -hmm. there is a massively creative and talented team behind the project. Yeah. You know, thankfully he said that because mm -hmm. a lot of people tend to forget, oh, well, you know what? He directed half of this, so we're not going to buy Van yeah. Valhalla. Mm -hmm. Dude, game design and game creation and game development is it's, not a joke. It's so a, if you're going to, yeah. Like a building of people that are behind this whole thing. If you're going to cancel a game just because of one person, mm -hmm. same thing that goes back to the, you know, that 70s show or Baby mm -hmm. Driver and, you know, House of Cards and yeah. stuff like that. If you're going to do that, you're affecting everyone else that worked behind it. Mm -hmm. They had no association to this and probably didn't even know. Yeah. And sometimes that's only, that could have been their only thing that they worked on, mm -hmm. you know, and was proud of what they did and how, what they did on the show and what they contributed and stuff like that and if you basically just say like you know oh yeah i was uh you know i was uh you know the the, the executive producer for that semi show yeah and, and then if someone comes around and says well you worked with a rapist then yeah then it's just like no it wasn't just we like, didn't know at the time we didn't know i didn't know what he did i was just i was, I was basically just doing what i could on exactly set and, stuff like that. and now you've basically ruined you know, everyone yeah. else's potential careers and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that they can put on their resume yeah. because of one other person. Yeah. And that's where I kind of have a problem with cancel culture Yeah, is that you can't just cancel an entire project or an entire show or TV show or whatever it may be based on the person, the actions of one person mm -hmm. when no one else knew. Yeah. Now it's different if the creative team knew, mm -hmm. excuse me, and they decided to hide it. That's different. Yeah. But if they didn't know, yeah. it, you're affecting other people. And again, that goes different for also content creators as well, too, of YouTube or any sort of thing. Because they PewDiePie, create, scare PewDiePie. Yeah. That's another thing. They canceled his whole second season because he that's, said the N word. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned I forgot him, about like, oh, that. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. And he keeps mentioning it. He's mm -hmm. like, dude, I really hope that YouTube, now that he has a contract with mm -hmm. YouTube, he's like, I hope they release the second season because mm -hmm. there were a lot of people that went on the show that took their time, mm -hmm. didn't get paid well enough mm -hmm. to go and participate in the show just for it to be canceled. Mm -hmm. Like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. that's where that's where I draw the line with them mm -hmm. because now these people didn't have anything to do with him saying the N word. No, and now all of a sudden they you're going to cancel with him. Yeah, for that short time. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, I'm assuming you know they just did what they can do on set and stuff, filming, you know, getting everything ready and stuff like that for the set and stuff, and also, you know, filming and stuff, editing and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, those people had no association with Pew PewDiePie. They were just mm. filming him. Yes, and that's it. S yes, it wasn't like a show he created. No, it was he just was a part of it yeah. and he helped YouTube, produce it and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, the other people that went in participated in it now get affected by his actions, yeah. which I can't agree with. Mm -hmm. um, something to essentially kind of help out what cancel culture did, and in a positive light. Yeah. Um, if you are the type of nerd that's really into Smash Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, really into the fighting game community, the FGC, you know, you probably have already heard that there are a lot of allegations about sexual harassment, violence, uh, pedophilia, rape, all those different allegations in the FGC, the fighting game mm -hmm. community. Um, if you Google it, you will see article after article to the point that ESPN actually wrote about it. And oh, ESPN wow. doesn't write about esports. No, they don't. They usually don't. They, mm -hmm. they do, but when they do, that's always like a negative yeah, connotation. Also, yeah. So I'm assuming that's probably why they wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, they Smash Brothers community just got hit massively hard mm. with a bunch of these allegations from a lot of pro players. Oh, wow. And it's massive, massive, massive to the point that now they're canceling tournaments left and right. And, you know, it, it's, it's shaking up a lot of stuff mm. because 
players that people essentially kind of looked and, you know, said, oh, yeah, these are really, you know, they're really cool and whatnot. Can't because mm-hmm. now some of them are convicted with pedophilia and mm-hmm. they get called out. This is where cancel culture kind of goes well, because mm-hmm. if you dig deep enough, this is the stuff that isn't forgivable. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of stuff that's just kind of like, you You'd know, be shocked of yeah. what people get away with. Exactly. Like and, that. you know, there was one I can't remember the name, but it was on an ESPN article where mm-hmm. it's like an underage relationship that one of them had <sighs> at the age of no. 20. I understand that you're a young adult, yeah. but like it's it's already a given. You were mm-hmm. taught at the age of what, 13, 14, 15, mm-hmm. that if you are over 18, don't date anyone that's four years younger because they're not mentally developed mm-hmm. yet. So if you're 18 wanting to date a 12 year old, like you should know, no. you know, <laughs> you should know. Oh um, but they basically got, uh, there, there are a bunch of allegations and they're trying to fix it. Wow. The only thing that I think that kind of negatively affected, uh, because of that, you know, that was negatively affected because of cancel culture was that, uh, nether realm studios pulled the plug on mortal Kombat afterlife or mm-hmm. after not afterlife. Um, it was their DLC. I can't remember what it was <laughs> aftermath. Oh. Uh, they got, they pulled their, uh, their DLC content and oh, wow. their game from Evo after being banned one year mm-hmm. uh, for extreme violence and they got pulled out of it. And I'm assuming it's also because of the allegations that have been going on yeah. and all these other things. But if you Google it, you'll look into it. That's a positive thing that's kind of happened because mm-hmm. of cancel culture. You'd like we said before, mm-hmm. if we find evidence about certain people that they've done wrong, good. Yeah. You know, um, did you have any examples that you wanted to get? No, no, that's pretty good. So okay. Far, yeah. I do want to talk about Doc for the last maybe 10 ish yeah, minutes, five, 10 that. minutes. Yeah. Um, just because we did mention him in the last episode. Yeah, we do need to talk about that. Um, but he was banned over about a week ago now. Yeah. No questions, like we mentioned at the beginning of the episode mm-hmm. in last week's issue. Um, there's no assumptions at all, pretty much, or not an assumptions. There's no evidence to show why he's been banned. Mm-hmm. No statements from Twitch, no statements from Doc, no statements from Miss Assassin, his mm-hmm. wife. Nothing. Um, It's still a mystery. It still plagues, you know, the Twitch community and still plagues a lot of content creators because we don't know. Um, And in part of it, some people want to blame cancel culture and are trying to say that because of cancel culture, that's why he was banned. Mm. There is no proof. Mm -hmm. um, But some people are essentially saying that he was basically banned. They've kind of thrown away the idea that it was a DMCA issue. Yeah. Yeah. some people are saying that it was because of his uh, cheating allegations that he had a couple years back mm-hmm. uh, that Twitch basically pulled the plug on him after they did a massive ban of uh, a al- uh, massive pull of, of uh, streamers mm-hmm. on their platform for, you know, having allegations against them that were proven to be correct or proven to be true um, or just allegations that have, a you know, that are more on the fence of being proven true. And he was one of them around that time. So cancel culture had that effect on him. Yeah. No evidence, no statement, no nothing. Yeah. Just no bam, nothing. Just, just you're done. done. Yes. Here is my issue with this and why I bring it up. Yeah. It's very inconsistent. And I get it that you can't call everyone else out. But there are very inconsistent patterns coming from this culture that don't benefit the overall cause. Yeah. I so totally, I, I see what you yeah. mean. Yeah. So my problem with having Doc banned and having no explanation as to why, and granted, I think that there is my conspiracy behind that or my, my kind of thought process is that they probably banned him for something that he probably did. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a big deal where they probably got arrested. Like most people are kind of assuming. I think that it was some sort of allegation that was made to him mm-hmm. and Twitch just pulled the plug on him and said, you know what? We can't have you on the platform at the time. We're trying to protect your name and our brand. More than likely, they're probably just going to can his contract and he's going to move to YouTube gaming. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I, he hasn't spoken out is because his contract has something against that. Yeah. And that's probably why he stays quiet. But, you know, Twitch pulling the plug on these people goes to show that they're very selective on how they pull the plug. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to other streamers that have been consistently violating the terms of service, yeah. they don't do that. It's the same thing. I feel like um, also uh, TikTok does that, too. I mean, not cancel culture, but it feels very favoritive mm-hmm. where... Um, they will basically show on your when you're going through if you guys don't have TikTok, TikTok's like the same thing as like Vine mm-hmm. or Musically. And you're going through like your for you page, like how YouTube is, and it'll show you just these random videos of just like over a million views while other cause my girlfriend is a, you know, TikToker. She she has like over fifteen thousand followers and stuff like that. But for some reason she only does dubbed music videos and just kind of d- plays like oh, like a uh, does cosplay videos mm-hmm. 
and she gets shadow banned because for some reason because um i don't know like but then she'll see like girls that dance provocatively yes and these are underage girls yep and nothing and, happens and nothing happens because they get over two million views or uh-huh. three million likes and stuff like it's that funny. and it's like what she puts time into these videos and she follows the guidelines but for some reason her videos don't get a lot of views and sometimes tiktok will just strike her and they'll take down a video or take out the audio because apparently mm-hmm. it's it's copyrighted but anyone that has big views essentially yeah and going back to twitch because that's a good example that you mm-hmm. gave there you mm-hmm. know twitch goes to show that they ha- they consistently want to follow the terms of service mm-hmm. and yet just like in tiktok like you mentioned it there are a bunch of streamers out there that violate the terms of service or on the, they're on the very thin line yeah. of just following it but you would um, think that they would yeah. they would look at it and be like hey we kind of had to take down that video because it was almost breaching community guidelines. Yes. No. Alinity. Biggest, mm-hmm. biggest name mm-hmm. in terms of controversy mm-hmm. on the platform has consistently violated the terms of service with, you know, animal abuse by throwing their cat, letting oh. their dog hump her, uh, feeding alcohol to a cat, and more recently flashing the Twitch stream accidentally but you know if we keep looking at the video obviously you can tell that there was a little bit of like a uh-huh. kind of like a, oh i don't think a person can be that naive i think yeah. that it was you know something especially like that. if you're streaming to millions or thousands of be people, a little more careful you, you would know? think you would be more careful or yeah. dress basically like okay if people are a thousand people are gonna watch me i gotta make sure i don't have a mishap or a slip up or something like yeah. that um the platform has also gone to show that they don't ban streamers mm. that are, you know, dressed very, very provocatively <laughs> yeah. and, you know, play, I don't know, what was that, that yoga game or like fit, uh, we Fit or mm-hmm. the Switch Fit game oh, yeah. that's come out. Mm-hmm. Like they're short shorts and they're like, you tight know, skin tight stuff. skin stuff all the way in so that you can see everything. Mm-hmm. There's streamers out there as well that literally have body paint on them, mm-hmm. you know, and this goes for males as well. Mm-hmm. You have streamers that are basically in like, they're super buff and they mm-hmm. have like very provocative clothes or don't even wear mm-hmm. shirts sometimes, you know, <clears throat> they, they go to show if they have a bunch of views. Yeah. That's my issue mm-hmm. with um, with Twitch mm-hmm. and the inconsistencies of the internet as well. And it goes back to the whole cancel culture aspect that sometimes that culture, and maybe this goes to kind of help them out a little bit mm-hmm. if they're participating in them. If you are a part of the culture, it should also be your responsibility to be as informed as possible and not just point the finger because the mob tells you to do mm-hmm. so. If you want to try and go after someone, be as informed as possible mm-hmm. and don't be a hypocrite. Yeah. Do not be a hypocrite and say, you know what? This person needs to be banned because of this, but I'm going to turn my back on this person because they kind of, you know, are the person who, you know, I enjoy watching Mm -hmm. and I support, you know, I, I, I've, I've seen this before where people, I didn't, it's, it's on my social media platform as well. They are consistently trying to be, uh, social justice warriors on the internet. And they will call out everyone and anyone that has done something wrong. Mm -hmm. But then there's a celebrity that has done the same actions as before Mm -hmm. and they adore them Mm -hmm. and publicize them as like the gods and goddesses of their life. Mm -hmm. But when they do something wrong, they don't call them out. And I hate that because that's hypocritical Mm -hmm. because now if you are trying to follow the laws that you've set upon society that you want other people to do, you should also be doing the same. Mm -hmm. People need to understand that if you're going to be saying that the internet is a record book of everything and everything that you said, if you post everything on Twitter and are very, 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 um, you know, active on there Mm -hmm. and showcase a lot of stuff, one day someone's going to look through your Twitter feed and Mm -hmm. find something and say like, what is this? Yeah. You know, and now you canceling other people, We'll come back to you. Mm-hmm. PewDiePie said it best. Everyone adores cancel culture until they're the ones getting canceled. Yep. So, I mean, it's only time will tell to see how much more this can grow. Yeah. I think as, you know, people, as consumers, mm-hmm. we need to do our job. You and I need yeah. to do our job in making sure that we are actively knowing yeah. what we consume mm-hmm. and how we consume it. Yes. It's very important to make sure that we talk about it in a neutral stance until, you know, it's proven to be correct. It's mm-hmm. proven to be false, whatever it may be. Um, just have good morals. Yeah. I live on that fact. Same here. You know, yeah. we have to make sure that we treat everyone with respect, mm-hmm. that we're fair to everyone to try not to be as hypocritical. You know, yeah. I try my hardest, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest, you know, back, what back, 
a decade ago, you and I would probably, I don't know, I don't want to say you, but you know, <laughs> no, me, no, yeah. <laughs> me, you know, using gay as an insult was a thing. Yeah, no, I'm, I'll am i be, yeah, I'll admit to that. Yeah. yeah, and now I, driving over here, mm-hmm. you know, there were people that were covering me off, and it's still ingrained in my head to the point where I have to oh, be like, you want to say, yeah. And I'm just like, no, because you know what? It's not the right thing to do. Yeah. And I try my hardest, and that's how I go and mm-hmm. about to try to improve certain things to and fit I the social norms. That shows, that shows what kind of person you grew into you know that you're aware of what what to say and what not to say what what to do and what not to do and to actually and i think that's what people want but at the same time it's like you know you do one mishap one Mm -hmm. slip up and then you're just and you're done yeah you're burned for it yeah Yeah. so it's important i mean here at keeping up with the nerds you and i are trying to make sure that we actively know what we talk about as much as we do yeah we're not trying to force our opinions or to we're not here just to tell you our opinions we're also to show you what's going on and how it affects everything or everybody Mm -hmm. and stuff like that exactly yeah so i think this is a good part too Good oh, place yeah. to end it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have been, if this is the first episode you've listened to, <laughs> to keep it up with the nerds. No, that this have, is not our episode. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it was a very heavy topic that I felt needed to be discussed. Yes. Um, as, you know, trying to be, as up and coming creators, mm-hmm. um, I think that it was essentially important to discuss this and kind of look at it from a different perspective. Yeah. I would say that I learned some stuff just discussing this with you today. Yeah, same here. So, um, very important to talk about. I would probably recommend to everyone who listens to this to just look more into it, be more educated, be understand. Yeah. Yes, be informative. Um, understand where things are coming from, why they pop up. Yeah. If and you are a part of, can- oh, sorry. And, so, and make sure what you're looking at is viable. Mm-hmm. Don't just look at it and be like, oh, that's all I need. Okay, then go. No. Dabble more into it. Exactly. It doesn't hurt to look into research. It doesn't hurt to look into what's going on and what this person did or how they did it, you know, and just make sure that when you're looking upon it, you're forming your own opinion. Exactly. Don't let anyone judge your opinion exactly. or don't let anyone change your opinion because that's your opinion. Yes. Yeah. So just be informative. Try not to be hypocritical. You know, life's changing. Life's becoming, internet's yeah. becoming more accessible it, to everyone. It's a new normal medium now. It's yes. basically becoming the main medium yeah. of everyone, of, 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 of this everyone. generation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Imagine the next 10 years, how much technology is going to grow. Let's be ready for that. All right. right. So (laughs) if you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, please check out the links in the description below to connect yourselves to our Podbean and Spotify for easier access. Uh, We are both on those platforms and we update them around the same time as these episodes do pop up on our channel as well. If you're listening to this on Spotify or Podbean, please look in the description as well to jump over to our YouTube channel and hit subscribe on that. Uh, Currently right now, we're only at seven subscribers, but we do have listeners. Yeah. (laughs) So it's kind (laughs) of... <laughs> Same thing with Spotify. So hit the follow, yeah. hit the subscribe button, you know, support it, you know, help support. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to hear us talk about anything in the dis- or in the comments, leave us something. Email us as well. Um, we will check out those emails yeah. and let us know what you guys want to, you know, want us to talk about as well. Uh, Renee, you want to plug anything in there? Uh, no, yeah, just make sure you guys just listen and subscribe at least. You know? <laughs> Let us know what you guys want. We would like to. that subscription. Yes, yes, please. Please. All right, we're gonna hit the uh, the outro. That's all you, man. Hey, Renee, watch this done in one take. You oh, ready? Okay, all, all right, right, here we go. Thank you, citizens, for listening to this issue of Keeping Up with the Nerds Variety Hour. I am your co host, Brian. Renee. Coming to you from 12920 Philadelphia Street, Whittier, California. Recording at Under City Comics. We thank you, citizens, once again, and hope to see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>